we can flee. I'll lure the guard away, pick the lock, and we'll vanish into the woods. Tonight. But let's try and full ass Johanka's defense. The bishop may be biased, but he will listen to reason, and it's possible to change his mind. The first step is to gather witnesses to speak for her. That's not too difficult if you helped them previously. Nicodemus has some important clues for Henry, and if you want a good outcome, you'll do well to listen to him. Henry, I must have a word with you about your hunker. Brother Nicodemus. You've heard something? The Inquisitor has decided that Yohanka will be tried, but he's agreed that I can defend her. That's really quite unusual. It must mean he hasn't come to a clear conclusion yet. Yes. I'll get her out of it. I'm afraid it may not be that easy. The thing is, I expect Yohanka will say the same things before the court that she's been preaching. What are you saying? Well, I've been thinking about what she's been saying, and it seems to me her preaching has a certain progression. Are you acquainted with the notion of the three orders of man? Not really, no. It's like this. It's said that everyone has their God-given place and purpose on earth. Laboratores, Oratores, and Bellatores. Those who work, those who pray, and those who fight. The common folk are born to work, to reap the fruits of the earth, and to obey the laws of God and man. It is the purpose of the nobles to protect the people and the church against all dangers and to maintain peace and justice on earth. And the church in turn has the task of caring for the spiritual welfare of all, ensuring the salvation of their souls and bringing solace to the people in times Quiet. of hardship so that they can endure their earthly trials and enter the kingdom of heaven. But what's all that got to do with Yohanka? Well, I noticed in her first sermon she primarily addressed the concerns of the common folk, and in the second, she criticised the nobility. Ah. So you think she might start talking about the church? Yes, I'm afraid she might. I dread to think how that might end up. Henry, you must warn her against that. She must show humility before the Inquisitor, and the wisest course would be to admit to being wrong. She's rather stubborn, but perhaps she'll listen to you. But the Inquisitor said no one's allowed to see her. No one except the Inquisitor's own men. You'll just have to think something up. I'm afraid your hanker's fate is mainly in your hands now. I'm relying on you. Witnesses can be summoned for your hanker's trial. So I wanted to ask you if you'd give a testimony. Maybe some learned speech in her defense? I'd be glad to do it. Your hanker deserves my help. Such testimonies could carry a lot of weight. You should try and get as many as you can. Adela, the Inquisitor is going to try Johanka in court. Oh, Lord. I hope she's acquitted. I was absolutely devastated when they took her away. I need people to speak in her defense, and I'd like to ask you to do it. I don't want to go there, really. I'm afraid of that Inquisitor, but you helped me, and so did Johanka. It's only right that I should try and help her. But what am I supposed to say there? I'm just a simple village girl. I don't know anything about these things. That doesn't matter. You just be yourself. It should be enough to talk about all the good Johanka does here and how she helps others. I'll send for you if you're needed. All right. Thanks a lot. Goodman Pavel, you're still here. That's a relief. I was afraid I'd miss you. Yes, yes, still here. But not for long. I had some business to deal with, but now that's out of the way and I'm getting ready to leave. What was it you wanted? You might have heard that Johanka was arrested by the Inquisitor and is facing trial. Indeed, word has reached me. Poor girl. I'd like to ask you to speak to the court in Johanka's defense. Of course, Henry. You have my word. And the word of a burger of Colleen ought to mean something. But to speak in defense of someone accused of heresy is no small matter. What do you want me to say? The same thing you told me. That it was a sacred sign that you happened to be nearby when Johanka was speaking, and so on. True. I'll tell the bishop that. You can rest assured. Thank you very much. I'll be back in two shakes. Please wait here a few more days for the court to convene, then I'll send for you. All right. All right. For Johanka's sake, I'll wait. I'm sure you've heard. Johanka was locked up by the Inquisitor. Who hasn't? The whole of Sasso is talking about it. And the Inquisitor was asking around about her. 
I'd like to ask you to appear before the court and say something in Johanka's defence. I can't say I'm keen on going there. But Johanka helped me. And you did too. I think it's only right that someone should say something good about her. Ah, thanks, Guta. I appreciate it. I'll send for you when it's time. Master Bailiff, Inquisitor Yaroslav is going to try Johanka. I know. He was here asking questions too. Oh? What did he want to know? Various things, like how things are here, whether people are honest, whether we observe the fest days and so forth. And then he asked about Johanka, about what she preaches, whether people come to listen to her and that. He's been talking to a lot of other people in Sasau too. I even heard that Katra, the swordsmith's wife, invited him to dine with them. That's interesting. Thanks for telling me. Was he just asking questions, or does he want you to testify before the court? Yes, he did ask me to testify, and I'm none too happy about it. I see. And what are you going to say about her? It depends what I'm asked, but there's not much I can say. I don't know Johanka very well. She seems virtuous and self-sacrificing to me. She's never done anything wrong, and no one here ever had a cross word to say about her, until recently. Maybe some gossip about her and Sir Sebastian. But I've heard similar talk about half the women folk here. Now that's just idle gossip. Johanka is a virtuous girl. True. But then there's that preaching of hers. Folk have been falling out. They're split according to whether they believe Johanka or not. I don't know quite what to think of it myself. But I don't want to jump to conclusions. I'll wait and see what the learned bishop has to say. Couldn't you add something good to your testimony for your hunker? I would, uh, show my gratitude substantially. What? Are you trying to bribe me to commit perjury? The Inquisitor will hear how you're going about defending your hunker. Good Lord, no. I wouldn't dream of it. I express myself badly, that's all. What I was trying to say, rather clumsily, is that I'd be very glad if you were to speak on Johanka's behalf, because she really deserves it. Hmm. Well, I'll overlook your clumsiness then. Thank you, Master Bailiff. A bit of inquisition of your own can also reveal who among the townspeople are set against Johanka and might bear false testimony at the trial. Father, the Inquisitor has had Johanka thrown in jail. I know, son. He's planning a hearing. Rightly so. It's about time this whole matter was dealt with. What do you think about it, then? As I say, it's a good thing that the matter is being investigated. The things Johanka has been preaching are, to say the least, disturbing. Who knows what these dreams are that she speaks of? And her words are only putting ideas in people's heads and leading them astray. Now, instead of going to church, as they should, they go to her in the false belief that they will find solace. It's creating a chasm between the people and the church and leading them away from the true teaching left to us by Christ. They're misguided and swamped in heretical ideas. But Johanka is only saying what the Virgin Mary has told her. What can be wrong with that? And how do you know the Virgin is really talking to her? Well, I believe she's telling the truth. Ah, but you can't be sure, can you? Do you really think a girl from the stable knows God's teaching better than the church? Better than the generations of church fathers and learned scholars since the time of Christ, who have studied the sacred scriptures and their correct interpretation? With all the evil that's already going on in this province, the last thing people need is a false prophet. Christ also came from a stable, though. There's no comparison. Christ was the Son of God. Enough of this. Bishop Yaroslav asked me to present my suspicions before the court, and that's what I intend to do. He will then resolve the whole matter. He is, after all, more qualified than anyone to do so. If you say so, Father. I'm here about your hunker. You're that fellow of hers, are you? What do you want? Uh, no. I'm just a friend of hers. Matthias is her, um, her fella. Huh. God knows how many she has. I heard you invited Bishop Yaroslav to come and dine with you. Yes, so what? Bishop Yaroslav is an esteemed visitor to Sasau, and it's only fitting he should be suitably hosted by devout burghers. And what did you talk about? 
What we discussed with the Monsignor is none of your business. What have you got against Johanka? Nothing. The question is, what has she got against us? Tell me that. What? She turns up here and tries to tell us how to live our lives, says the Virgin Mary whispers to her in the night. Yeah, I'm sure. To a simple village wench. I'd like to know who's really putting those ideas in her head. She's just getting people all worked up. Men, especially. Coming around here with her nonsense. Sasau is a decent, orderly place. I'll have you know. We don't want any trouble here. All this talk about hellfire and the end of the world. God of mercy. No one is interested in what she has to say. All they want is some spectacle. She ought to have thought twice before she started. Not that she wasn't warned. What do you mean, warned? As I said, she was told. Tell me everything you know. I represent the royal hetman, so don't try and keep anything from me. If you must know, some of the fellas want to have it out with her and tell her to stop. No one wants her speeches here. But would she listen? No. The devil possessed her to bring harm to us. So it was you who sent those men? All I wanted was to protect the Sasso folk against her poisonous tongue. And I'll do just that. The Monsignor asked me to testify in court. And I'll tell everything I know there. And I'll do likewise. Farewell. Go. I need something from you, sir. I suppose you heard that Johanka was locked up by the Inquisitor and is facing charges of heresy. I did. And it's most disturbing news. What you might not know is that he's agreed that I can defend her at the trial. You? Do you even know what to say? Sure I know. It'll turn out just fine. Trust me. But I need you to testify at the court. In Johanka's defence, of course. Naturally. You don't think I could just sit here and do nothing? Besides, the bishop has already insisted that I appear before the court. Oh. All right. One moment. I apologize if I was a little hasty. This whole affair has left me anxious. I appreciate that you want to defend her. However, I don't think it would have any effect. No offense, but I don't think you'll be able to achieve anything in court. I'm afraid the Inquisitor will judge as he sees fit, whatever anyone says. But I have an idea how you could help. Oh? How's that? Flee. With your Hanka, of course. An idea how you could the custodian's help. lack of faith is disturbing. But you can agree to try and break out your hunker. Huh. You might be right. But how? The bishop won't let anyone see your hunker. Your hunker is being held at the rat house, isn't she? You could pass yourself off as one of the Inquisitor's men, get in there at night, and escape with her. How am I supposed to pass myself off as one of his men? Well, when his guard came here, he identified himself by means of a document. If you could get your hands on it, a copy of the papers you need can be found in the bishop's room and you can arrange for the bishop to be otherwise occupied to make sure he doesn't interrupt. Johanka's not interested though. She prefers to meet her fate head on, good or bad, so that's a dead end. Johanka, I really don't think this is going to end well for you. But there's another option. We can flee. I'll lure the guard away, pick the lock, and we'll vanish into the woods. Tonight, we'll run far from here, where no one knows you, and you can start a new life. No, Henry, I can't do that. The Blessed Virgin led me here, and here is where I belong. I won't run away like a criminal. No, I don't think that's a good idea. I'm sure Johanka will be acquitted by the court, and everything will be all right. Running would just confirm the Inquisitor's suspicions, and she'd always be looking over her shoulder. I don't agree. As I said, I don't believe you can affect the outcome of the court. If your hunk of flees, yes, she'll have to lie low for a while. But in time, it will all blow over. You can take her anywhere, as long as it's far enough from here. A girl like that will always find her feet. She can easily hide out somewhere where she's not known. Maybe there could even be a place for her on my estate. Think about it. But whatever you decide... If Johanka comes to any harm, you'll have me to answer to. I'm very fond of her, and her of me, 
And I don't want anything to happen to her, understand? But, if everything ends well, I'll show you my gratitude, I assure you. Anything else, the bishop Henry? also wants to know about the going-ons in the province. Henry has done some things Thank already you, and can discuss them to get on the bishop's One good graces. You go. Let me remind you that it's your Christian duty to report anything suspicious going on concerning the church and the true faith. If you're aware of anything of the sort in these parts. If you prove yourself a commendable servant of the church, I would also take that into account in judging Johanka's case. There were Valdensians hiding in Uges. Really? And how did you find out about it? Sir Hanush sent me to help the vicar track them down and catch them. So, Sir Hanush had an interest in finding them? Yes, that's right. I'm pleased to hear it. It's not always possible to see eye to eye with secular lords in such matters. And how did it end up with the members of the sect? They fled. The vicar is still trying to track them down. That's unfortunate. Let's hope the vicar succeeds promptly in his mission. A demon's skull was found on the church building site. Hmm, yes. I heard something about it. A disturbing report. Tell me what you know about it. It was a deception, sir. Someone made it with evil intentions to frighten people. I found the skull and brought it to the local knacker. He confirmed it was a human skull with animal horns stuck on. You did the right thing, Henry, in uncovering the deception and in telling me about it. The cicatas get drunk on wine and play dice in the monastery cellars at night. But how do you know about it? How does a servant of the royal hetman come by knowledge of the confidential affairs of the Brotherhood of Monks? I caught wind of it. I heard it from a novice that the brothers were sending out at night to buy wine for them. I see. And what was the name of this novice? Yodok. Hmm. There is a novice of that name at the monastery. I shall have to speak to the prior about these matters. Thank you for bringing this to my attention. If you but he pays to be guided on what familiar. you tell him. Well, the parish priest in Ujits is rather uh, unorthodox. Not that he's a bad person, not at all. He takes good care of his flock, no doubt. It's just that he drinks quite a lot. In fact, he's even said mass while drunk. And, um, he keeps a concubine. Hmm. That distresses me. All the more so because what you describe isn't at all unique amongst the clergy. Thank you for telling me, Henry. Matters like this certainly must be addressed. The former parish priest of Rovna, Father Simon, went missing one day. Everyone thought he'd fled from the province, but in fact he just went to the woods and became a hermit. I see. Why did he do that? Because he got some girl pregnant. The child died during birth, though, and the mother too. He took it to be retribution for his sin. So he fled far from people, because he didn't feel fit to be their pastor anymore. That's very interesting indeed. Where is this Father Simon now? I tracked him down in the woods and talked him into going back to Rovna. They needed a parish priest there, and Simon was convinced taking on the task would make amends for his sin. Interesting. Father Simon's story is certainly remarkable. Whether his actions are appropriate for a cleric is another matter of course. The only way to sway the bishop's mind is to present sufficient ecclesiastical arguments to support the notion of the Virgin Mary visiting a humble girl. ...and preaches to them. Either she made everything up, or the devil himself is whispering in her ear. If I may, Monsignor, the Virgin Mary really does speak to Johanka. Is that so? And on what do you found this claim? It couldn't be the devil. Johanka lives at the monastery, doesn't she? Close to the cave of St. Procopius. St. Procopius, who overpowered the devil and cast him down, did he not? The evil one would hardly dare return to the dominion of the saints to whisper in Johanka's ear. Surely that's obvious. It's true, Henry. An evil spirit, or even Lucifer himself, would have little power in the vicinity of the remains of St. Procopius. But the fact that she lives at the monastery doesn't mean that she is not misguided. What's more? She is an interloper there herself, who would not even be tolerated if it weren't for Brother Nicodemus. Yes, Father. I am aware of the impropriety of her presence in the monastery grounds. But in this, I must concur with Henry. Monsignor, would you please hear the testimony of the respected burgher Pavel of Colleen? He will testify that Johanka isn't making anything up. Well, 
I'm very curious what this Pavel will tell us. Call Pavel of Colleen. I'm a little surprised to find a counselor of Colleen here. Especially you, who makes no secret of your animosity towards Sassau Monastery. True. Although I have only criticized the monastery in secular matters of property, which concerned a dispute with the town of Colleen and therefore my duties as a counselor. Pavel, please tell us about your recent experience. I'm all ears, Goodman. Monsignor, some years ago I hid some money in Sassau Woods. When I found myself here again recently and heard Johanka's words, I remembered that matter. Johanka made me aware of my inordinate love of wealth, and I resolved to donate the money in question for the common good of Sassau. For this I needed an honest intermediary who would locate the money. In this too, Johanka helped me by putting me in touch with Henry here. By the grace of God, he found the long-lost treasure and donated it for the good of Sassau. The whole matter I regard as the intervention of the Holy Spirit. An interesting tale, Goodman Pavel. Not only that, it's also evidence of divine providence and that Johanka isn't making anything up. She wasn't possessed by an evil spirit. On the contrary, Our Lady really did speak to her. I must concur with that, Monsignor because I was subsequently also visited in a dream by the Virgin Mary. What? You too? Yes. She appeared in a blue cloak and waved to me. Do you swear that what you say is true, Pavel? I swear by Almighty God, Monsignor. Remarkable. Truly remarkable. Very well, Goodman. Thank you for your testimony. If you did the pilgrimage properly, Father Godwin gave you an excerpt of Matthew Yanov's works. These are relevant to the trial. Monsignor, with your permission, I'd like to draw attention to the work of the great scholar Matthew of Yanov. He exalted women like Johanka. He said that God created what is weak in order to bring shame on what is strong. That's why God turns to women who love Christ and blesses them with such visions so that they can point out and rectify the vanities of men. It can't be heresy if the learned masters of universities write such tracts. What you say is remarkable. Matthew's work, which you mentioned, does speak to Johanka's benefit, but I wouldn't have expected that someone of your station has even heard of the master of Yanov. How did you come by his work? Well. Johanka pressed me to go on a pilgrimage of repentance. I went to Ujitz, where there is a Marian church, and there, the parish priest gave me a copy of the text. That's surprising indeed. Especially that you are at all capable of reading such a work, and understanding it. You're quite a fountain of unexpected skills, Henry. Thank you, Monsignor. Let's proceed then. The other witnesses will is weigh in on Johanka's behalf. Yes, please call Brother Nicodemus. He has something to say about it. He's a man of learning and knows more about these things than I do. Certainly. I also wish to hear his testimony. Call him. Nicodemus, for some time you were insisting that the infirmary needed extra pairs of hands. It was only at your request that Johanka, against all accepted custom, was allowed inside the monastery walls. I've already spoken to Abbot Peter about her. But please, tell me how Johanka behaved. Monsignor, I must stand behind Johanka. The girl is a treasure. Selfless, charitable, and good-hearted. She helped more people here than anyone else. I have never seen her do anything that would contradict the behavior of a good Christian. She never discussed questions of faith with me. She was always focused only on her work, which she carried out impeccably. And afterwards, when she began making claims of Marian apparitions? Yes. Yes. That's quite an extraordinary thing. The things she preached couldn't have come from any of the brothers, or from books, because she can't read. Therefore, I... Believe the Blessed Virgin really spoke to her. Nonsense. She made the whole thing up. Or someone did prompt her. You're very keen to defend her, brother. It makes me wonder whether she didn't get her wisdom from you. 
I already said she got none of it from me, and I would never lie before Almighty God. But it seems to me it's the inadequate education of the good parish priest here that's behind his flimsy litany. What? Am I to be criticized by someone who's more a gardener than a scholar? Father Fabian, let Nicodemus speak. And you, Nicodemus, stick to the point, if you please. Certainly, Monsignor. Please allow this humble gardener to put the good priest right, because he evidently knows nothing of the fact that other women before Johanka had similar experiences. Blessed Hildegard of Bingen also had similar visions. And what about St. Bridget, or Elizabeth of Schernau, or Catherine of Siena? Like them, Johanka here only humbly spreads the message of Our Lady. She does not present herself as an intermediary of divine mercy. Please do not condemn your hunker, Bishop Yaroslav. In my judgment, her visions are genuine and her words sincere. Thank you, Nicodemus. Your plea is very bold. But what you say about Hildegard and the others is true. You can rest assured, I will consider your words very carefully. Fabian, have you had trouble with heretics before or had any suspicions of heresy here? Not much, Monsignor. Now and then there have been traveling preachers and various charlatans here and there. Although, I did recently get reports that there were members of the Waldensian sect hiding in the province. Yes, I know of that. Henry here was helping the vicar to track them down. Unfortunately, though, they managed to flee. Thank you, Father Fabian. That's all. I'm glad to have been of service, Monsignor. I thank you also, Brother Nicodemus. You too may stand down. And you, Henry, you've been around Johanka more than anyone. Do people come to her for blessings? Well, they come to her, yes. But I swear she never blessed anyone. But when someone comes to her, she tries to help them, like a good Christian. Henry? I'm sure you're aware that to lie here is a mortal sin and a crime. I do. And I'm not lying. All right. Anything else? Yes, Monsignor. Johanka helped Guter, the tailor's wife. Please hear her testimony. You'll see for yourself that Johanka is a good Christian. Very well. I promised I'd hear your witnesses. Call this Guter. Guter, you witnessed Johanka's first sermon. What did she speak of? About how we should be virtuous and not sinful. And then you went to see Johanka, didn't you? I did, Monsignor. I, I wanted to ask her for help, and she did. I was praying for my husband for a long time and begging God to help him. And I believe my prayers were answered, and he sent Johanka to us. Hmm. And there were others who came to her seeking help? Yes, Monseigneur. There were. And that shrine, and the gifts. People brought them to Johanka so she'd help them? I couldn't tell you. But she helped me, without any of that. Didn't you bring her any gifts? Well, yes, but that was after. Just some old cloth for bandages and bed covers, so she could help others like she helped me. Every evening, I pray for Johanka and thank the Blessed Virgin for sending her to us. I see. Thank you. You may go. I'd like you to listen to Adela. She amended her life and doesn't live in sin anymore, all because of Johanka. Johanka helped people selflessly, not for any benefit, and Adela can testify to that. All right. Bring this Adela. Adela. Until recently, you were living in the nearby town of Ledechko, is that so? Y yes And how did you make a living there? I... I served at the baths, laundering and repairing clothes, and preparing the baths. Is that all? No. Sometimes I went with the fellas and... and... Um, pleasured them... for money. But I don't do it anymore. I swear. I changed my ways on account of Johanka and Henry here, and now I lead a decent life. You're saying you simply gave up your... profession? 
Yes. Henry convinced me, and Johanka took me in. Very well. Thank you. And since you left Ledechko, have you sinned with anyone? No, Monsieur, I haven't. Good. May God give you the will to maintain your newfound virtue, Adela. And now, please answer one more question. You're living with Johanka now, yes? Tell me what she says to the people who come to her. Well, they come with all sorts of problems. Some want just advice. Some want her maybe to bless them or talk to Our Lady for them. They believe she's a holy woman. So, Johanka accepts gifts from these people and then gives them her blessing? No, it's not like that. Johanka doesn't bless anyone. And she doesn't want any gifts from anyone either. Folk just bring them. The things they bring, she gives them out to the sick and wounded. She doesn't keep anything, I swear. You swear? Yes. I swear to it all, Monseigneur. I'd never lie to you. All right. You may go. Now I wish to question Katra, the swordsmith's wife. And you can neutralize much of the negative testimony. A loose woman she is, who goes with anyone, and even fornicated with a custodian, Sir Sebastian. Forgive me, Monseigneur, but Katra isn't telling the whole truth. What do you mean, Henry? She's the one who set a band of thugs on Johanka several times to cause trouble for her and threaten her. She wanted to drive Johanka out of town. That's not the deed of a good Christian, plotting intrigues like that. She admitted it all to me. Is that true? I, uh... I only did what was necessary to stop her from bringing us to harm. Monsignor, you can see yourself that Katra holds a grudge against Johanka. Yes. I must agree with Henry. In view of your apparent antagonism towards Johanka, whatever the reasons for it, I cannot allow you to influence these proceedings. You should have reported your concerns to Father Fabian instead of acting willfully as you did. But... She's bringing us nothing but trouble. I will be the judge of her transgressions, not you. Nevertheless, I have also heard rumors of Johanka's immorality that cannot be ignored. Bring here the Sassar custodian, Sir Sebastian von Berg. So, Johanka not only incites rebellion against the nobles, but also seduces them into sin and immorality. Monsignor, I've known Johanka a long time, and she's a virtuous girl and a good Christian. She just needed support. It wasn't a bodily desire, but one of the soul. Consider what she went through. Her whole family slaughtered, and everyone here turned their backs on her, but for Sir Sebastian. Anyone can make a mistake, can't they? And she's sorry for her mistake. Henry? You proved yourself a good servant of the church when you told me of your disturbing findings concerning the situation hereabouts. You've been very keen to appear here in Johanka's defense. You said a lot about her, but please, tell me why you've been helping her all this time. Because I don't know anyone like her. She endured what would destroy most people and never gave up. She never wasted time feeling sorry for herself. Instead, she helped others even at the cost of her own suffering. And she helped to redeem me, too. It's a pity everyone isn't like her. It seems you speak sincerely, and you hold her in high regard. Your sincerity before God carries great weight. Thank you. Monsignor, please permit me to say one more thing. I heard some wise words at a sermon in Scalitz, and I think I should share them here. It's our Christian duty to fight against sin, but we must love the sinner. So I beg you, Monsignor, be lenient to Johanka. You're right, Henry. Those are wise words. The problem is when Johanka herself is questioned. Unfortunately, her faith is too strong to deny her visitations. Why? Forgive me, Monsignor, but I could do nothing else. Our Lady asked me to do it and I couldn't refuse her. And I did the right thing. The Virgin Mary visited me again in my cell and showed me new things. Monks and prelates who took off their robes and put on princely cloaks instead. 
They threw down their staves, buckled on swords, and placed crowns on their heads. They rejected Christ's example and hoarded wealth for themselves. They paid no heed to the people, but only gave them absolution for money and... Silence! You will not speak like that! Johanka, are you aware you're facing very grave accusations? Yes, Monseigneur. I am. You stand accused of preaching from ignorance and leading the people away from the protective embrace of Holy Mother Church. If you do not recant, you will suffer grave consequences. Pride and ignorance clouded her reason. Child, it would distress me greatly to have to pronounce a verdict of condemnation. Speak then. Do you recant your sermons and swear never again to preach to the people? And are you prepared to repent? God is my witness. I did all this with good intentions. And I will never preach to the people again. I recant everything I preached and want to be accepted back amongst good Christians again. I will do whatever you command to make amends for my sins. Behold, your hunker soul too have we brought back from the dark labyrinth of the evil one and into the divine light of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the remnants of Satan's evil influence linger in her yet and must be cast out in the name of Almighty God. Take her. We must all be ever vigilant of Lucifer's evil designs and avoid being caught in his snares. Only Holy Mother Church can safeguard all Christian folks from the onslaught of the devil. Only Holy Mother Church cares for their souls so they may find salvation in the kingdom of heaven. Behold, Lucifer has been defeated. Yohanka has been freed from his malign influence. Now she will take refuge in the sanctuary of the convent, where she will be guided on the righteous path back to our Lord Jesus Christ. God be praised. Matthias soon recovered from his illness, but when he went to look for Johanka, he found only an empty room. Although she'd been cleared of the charge of heresy, she had to leave with the Inquisitor to enter a convent and do penance for her sins. And all that Matthias had left of her was a bitter sweet memory. God alone knows if either of us will ever see her again.
Matthew does recover and you can speak to him and some of the others about the trial. So, your hunker is gone? Yes, sadly. I'll miss her. But on the other hand, I don't think what awaits her is anything bad. The contemplative life is free of many everyday hardships and woes, and her healing skills will find application elsewhere. You advised her well, Henry. The fact that it all ended well is largely to your credit. It could easily have taken a very ugly turn, considering the gravity of the charges against her. Do you still think the Virgin Mary's visitations were real? Who can say? Was she really deceived by Lucifer, as the Inquisitor said? I don't think so. I think her visions came from Our Lady, but I suppose we'll never know for sure, and Johanka will have plenty of time in the convent to reflect on her visions. Johanka was cleared of the most grievous accusations, despite the things that were said in the trial, which you heard yourself, sir. Yes, but she's gone. Johanka is gone. But I suppose it's best that way. I should never have started that affair with her. It was unreasonable on my part, and unjust towards her. Now I can see the wrongness of my actions, thanks to her. Recently, I had a new weapon made for myself. But I think it's more fitting that you should have it. Here it is. How are you doing, Matthias? All right, I suppose. Depends how you look at it. Uh, I'm well. Still alive, as you can see. Which can't be taken for granted after everything that happened to me. But I'm still grieving for your hunger. I keep asking myself if it's just that I'm still here. Well, she... Well, you know. What happened was the will of Our Lady. Johanka said as much herself. Don't trouble yourself over it. Just be glad you came back from death's door. I am. I don't mean to sound ungrateful. I really appreciate what your hunker did for me. Only, I just regret that she's not here with us. I'd like to see her again. Yeah, so would I. It's so, not the worst outcome, you now, but you can do better. I wish I knew. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.